So let's imagine we have this information here. It's sales information and we have a column with store and then we have different years across in the columns and then we have numbers here in the middle. We only know that these are sales because of the title there. The ideal situation would be that the table uh, column names would give us the complete information, the, uh, the detail uh, would be detailed enough for us to understand. If I didn't have this information here, I would really not know. So if I go and hide this, we look at that table. Now we know it's sales, but it could be something else. I don't know. It could be quantity sold. It could be number of customers entering the class, the, the store during the year. Who knows? So the names of the columns could give us that information, but they don't. That's, that could be one of the first signs that maybe our data needs to be unpivoted. And if it is an unpivoted, it means it's pivoted. So this type of report would be, in fact, what we could create with a pivot table. After we have our data set up in columns with the pivot table, then we could build this report. And what happens is that a lot of times people tend to enter that data in the same layout that they want the output to be in. And uh, I have a couple of classes. If you go back uh, in my playlist of live classes, you will find two classes there that go through an example to show exactly that. Uh, the difference between the layout that we should use to enter data, tabular format, data in columns, and the layout we can use to represent, to show our data at the end, okay? So another rule of thumb that we can use, and I learned this from my friends Fabio Gatti and Rodrigo Ayosa, they are both uh, from Brazil, one way that we can see that maybe those columns need to be unpivoted is we look at the title of the column, the header. Uh, so, for example, here I have store. Then I go, are these stores? Well, you could say these are not stores, it, these are cities. Well, okay, but these are, let's imagine we have company that has stores in different cities. So, yes, this could be the designation of the different stores. Okay, so that's fine. And what about these numbers here in this column? Are these 2017? What is that, 2017? No. So, these are sales amounts and at the top, we have the year. So this, this tells us that what we really need for this data to be in tabular layout is to have a column that says the year and another column that says the sales amount. And so I would need for the Toronto store, since I have one, two, three, four years, I will need four different rows. So I have a column that says year and then I'll go Toronto year 2017, Toronto year 2018, Toronto year 2019, and so forth. And then on the third column, I would have sales amount, and then I have, I'll put this, these values there. Okay, so if this is something that you just need to do once, and if your data set is as small as this one is, maybe you don't even want to go to the trouble of creating a query, or maybe you do. Using Power Query is so fun. I like it so much that you maybe just want to use that as an excuse <laughs> to, to go and try and learn and practice a little bit in Power Query. I would really recommend that. So how can we use Power Query to put this data the way we need it to be? So let's go and do this. Select anywhere in the table and our data could be in another file and we can use Power Query to bring the data from another file. The data does not have to be in the same Excel file as we have here today. But since the purpose today is not to show how to bring data from another location, but in fact is just to show, well, it doesn't matter where the data is coming from, how can I change the layout? So I'm just to be easier for our class today, all the data is in the same file. Okay, so. Select anywhere here, go to data, and then we can do from table slash range. This uh, data here is already formatted as a table. We can see it's a table. So now Power Query Editor opens up. So remember that we wanted to, 
we realized that these columns from 2017 up to 2020, so I can press shift and then click the last one to select all the cells at once. They need, they are pivoted and we need to unpivot them. So we can come to the transform tab. And one way of, uh, remembering that is we are about to transform the layout so it needs to be in the transform tab and we can come here and do and pivot columns or sometimes if, if we click on the columns with the right button of the mouse we have some options available here and then pivot columns is also available here so either works and see what we get. We get these two columns here. Now we have Toronto, 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 2017, 2018, 2019. The way I told you before, I wanted the data to be. Isn't that wonderful? Can you imagine the formulas that we would have to, to do in Excel, to write in Excel to get that just like that, or to move things around with, anyways, I don't want to think about it. So automatically we got these two names attribute and value in the columns uh, so that's fine for now uh, and we can change the name i could come here and change the name there in the formula if you don't feel so comfortable you can just double click and come here and do year okay and come here and do the value would be the sales amount right and you see Power Query uh, created a new step here saying uh, that is renaming the columns. So, so that's fine. Our data is ready for us to load. It, uh, I would now just change the data format, the data types, I mean. So store will be a text column. Here, Power Query decided to use as a text if we are doing a data analysis, we may want to, for example, calculate difference between two years. So it's best to have it as a whole number, of course. And uh, sales amount, we can put it as a currency. Okay. Currency is also known as fixed decimal number. Uh, it has a fixed location for the decimal separator. It works with four decimal places, although it only displays two of those decimal places, okay? So that's it, enough talking. We have what we needed. I just need to go home, close and load two. And now by default, Power Query uh, tends to send the data to a new a table into a new worksheet, but I'm going to ask Power Query to put my data here on the side and click OK. We can close the Power Query pane here. And Power Query, although we were seeing the currency format there in Power Query Editor, that is not really transported to our spreadsheet here. So what we can do is to find that little black arrow, click once and then click another time to make sure you select the entire column of the table, including the header of the column. Okay, and now we can come to home and say, for example, we want this as currency. Or if you don't want to have the dollar sign there because it makes it a little bit cluttered, you can say none. And maybe we don't need the two decimal places there either. So we can uh, set this to zero decimal places. Okay, so that's that's looking good now. If we refresh our query, let's see what happens. Let me put just one more store here. So you see how, because this is a table, it automatically absorbs it there. If you haven't watched the class about the advantage of using tables, I totally recommend you that as well. Very important for anyone working with Excel to know how to work with tables. So now I added Regina to my data how can i get that information here so i need more four rows more saying regina for the years from 2017 2000 up to 2020 so what i need to do and because we have we took the time to prepare this in power query i just need to do right click and now refresh and it already came brought the data here the format was kept 
if for any reason it was not kept, uh, so it, let's say the sales amount number format went back to not having the thousand separators and all that, you can come to data and then here properties having a cell selected in this table properties and see if we have here preserved cell formatting. So here you go. Now it doesn't matter. It does not matter how many rows your data comes with. As long as it keeps the same structure, you just need to right click and refresh and everything gets updated in your list. And now from here, you could go insert pivot table or you can calculate, for example, uh, calculate uh, with formulas, some ifs, for example, count, etc., etc. Your data now is in tabular layout and it's good to go for data analysis.